Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from FramesPlanet.com. All of us at some point get gas as photographers. That's gear acquisition syndrome. We lust after the most expensive and glorious cameras and bits of equipment that are out there. Well, unless we've won the lottery or robbed a bank recently, most of these things remain out of our reach. However, just for fun, let's have a look at the 10 most expensive cameras in the world today. In at number 10, the Nikon D4S. This is the full-frame Pro DSLR launched on February the 25th, 2014 to succeed the Nikon D4. With a new image sensor, processor, battery, expanded ISO range and better ergonomics, as well as an improved autofocus system and a new raw small option of 4 megapixels, the D4S received a Technical Image Press Association Award in the category of Best Digital SLR Professional in May 2014 and a European Imaging and Sound Association Award for European Professional DSLR Camera 2014 to 2015. With expandable ISO up to 409,600 and shooting at 11 frames per second, the Nikon D4S is available in the UK for £5,199, 99p or in America for $6,000. In at number 9, the Canon 1DX. The decidedly long in the tooth Canon 1DX is the pro flagship camera from Canon, released all the way back in 2012. But with more megapixels and more frames per second than Nikon's D4S, the 1DX remains the favourite of many professionals, especially those shooting sports. Featuring a 61 point autofocus system and shooting at 14 frames per second, as well as having a 100,000 pixel auto exposure metering system, the Canon is 5,200. £199 in the UK or $6,800 in the US. At number 8, the Hasselblad Luna. Hasselblad say the Luna takes its aesthetic and technological inspiration from the first camera to go into space, which is the Hasselblad 500C in 1957. I can't see it myself, but if you really want a Sony NEX7 with a leather handle for $7,000, then who am I to argue? Yes, that's right, basically the Luna is a Sony NEX7 underneath it, and it features the same 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, making it the smallest sensor in our top 10 lineup. A B&H fast sale last year brought the price down though from $7,000 down to a mere $1,500. Still much more expensive than the Sony, but uh, at least you do get the leather handle. In at number 7, the Pentax 645Z. This is a professional medium format camera launched by Ricoh, who now own Pentax, on April the 15th, 2014. While it shares the same sensor with the Phase 1 IQ250 and the Hasselblad H5C, it retails for less than a third of the price. It won the 2015 TIPA award for best medium format camera. The 645Z is the successor to the 645D and comes with improved ISO and the ability to shoot video, as well as having a tilting screen. It has a 51.8 megapixel CMOS sensor and can shoot with expanded ISO up to 2,600. In the UK, you can pick one up for a little under £6,800 or $8,500 if you're in America. In at number 6, the Leica M240 Edition Leica 60. If you love Leica digital M series cameras but wish they were more expensive and that there wasn't any way to review your images until you got back home and plugged it into a computer, then the Leica 60 Edition of the M240 is the camera for you. Costing over twice as much as a regular Leica M240, the Leica 60 does away with the LCD screen on the back and gives you an ISO dial instead. How retro. This comes with a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, basically identical to the one in the M240. It has a minimalist design, actually designed by Audi, and is yours for £12,000 in the UK or $16,280 in America. At number 5, the Leica S-Type 007. The second Leica on the list, the S-Type 007, is not out yet but is expected in August 2015. It features a larger sensor than full frame at 40 by 35 millimeters and at 375 megapixels is high resolution but with lower pixel density than the Nikon D810 or Sony A7R2 and a smaller sensor than the Pentax 645Z all three of which cost substantially less than the Leica, and therefore the camera feels like a bit of an anomaly. 
37.5 megapixels and 4K video in a weather sealed magnesium body can be had for 20 grand in UK money or 25,400 US dollars. The number four spot sees another Hasselblad. This one's a proper one, the H5D 50C Wi-Fi. The 50C was the world's first medium format camera with a CMOS sensor. Up until then, we're talking January 2014, big sensor cameras had used CCDs, which aren't that great in low light. The 50C sensor is almost twice as large as a 35mm full frame sensor, can shoot up to ISO 6400 and, as you can guess from the name, incorporates Wi-Fi. The previous edition of this camera didn't have Wi-Fi, but to avoid upsetting cameras who'd shelled out the best part of $30,000 on them, Hasselblad offered a upgrade to the new Wi-Fi edition for just $500 between January and March 2014. In the UK, the 50C Wi-Fi is £23,000 and it's 28 grand in USD. So now we're up to the top three spot and in at number three is the Phase 1 XF IQ3 80 megapixel. The prices are really starting to shoot northwards now and the specs are equally astronomical for the XF IQ3 80 megapixel. This camera takes resolution to a whole new level at over twice the pixel count of a Nikon D810. The Retina touchscreen, 13 stops of dynamic range and upgradable operating system are all nice features and arguably things you would expect for the best part of US dollars If the 80 megapixel seems a little bit over the top, there is also a 50 megapixel and 60 megapixel version as well. Phase 1 also launched two new lenses to go with the system, a 35mm 3.5 and a 120mm f4, which are touted as being able to resolve 100 megapixels of detail, so they should be fairly future-proof. If you get one of these cameras though, remember to leave enough money in the bank to go and upgrade your computer too. Whatever you're using now, you might as well throw in the bin as working on 80 megapixel RAW files will require an insane amount of computing power. This camera features an 80 megapixel CCD sensor, which gives you a 10,328 by 7,760 image size. It's Wi-Fi enabled and has a touchscreen display, yours for £35,000 or $48,990. In at number two, and a serious hike in money, the Sous Frere Daguerreotype is essentially a wooden box with a hole in it. Le Daguerreotype was Louis-Jacques Monde Daguerre's main contribution to camera history. The sliding box camera was designed by him for his Daguerreotype process. Two variants were made since he gave his production licenses to two Parisian camera makers, Alphonse Giraud and the Seuss brothers. Probably Giraud worked together with the optician Bianchi, who had a shop in the same street. Thus, the original Le Daguerreau type of Giraud with Daguerre's quality seal was basically the same as the sliding box camera offered by Bianchi, but without the seal. This camera is 175 years old now. It is signed by Louis Daguerre himself and is on exhibit at Westlich in in Vienna and it sold recently at auction for $978,000. In at number one, an original Leica O series number 107, it's actually the first of only 25 made and was, according to experts, the first Leica to be exported, allegedly for a patent application in New York. It was released in 1923 and bought by an unnamed Asian collector for $1.9 million. The bidding lasted less than two minutes. So that's it. That's our roundup of the 10 most expensive cameras in the world today. If money was no object, what camera would you buy and why? I want to see your comments below on that one. And as always, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe using the big red button that appears underneath this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers.